back doing our thing virtually this yep. week. Back uh, to normal. <laughs> back to normal podcasting indeed. Uh, Melissa, how was your trip back? Back home? It was nice. It was a pleasant drive. It was kind of rainy. Uh, it, but I liked it. It was a good moody, rainy drive through the woods. I got to I, I stopped for dinner out of McDonald's okay. next to the St. Louis <laughs> Six Flags. So go. I just got to sit there in my car and eat a quarter pounder while I look <laughs> at a roller coaster in like the rainy sunset. It was very scenic. <laughs> That's funny. Good. Good. Well, I am glad you got home safe. It was a blast yes. to have you out <laughs> Actually, here. Kyle, no, I didn't. Blasting. I'm a ghost. I... Uh, so welcome to the ghost era of the captain's <laughs> Melissa has uploaded her consciousness just so the podcast could continue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> For podcasts only. I only right? have to talk about podcast things now. I'll never speak to my parents again unless they want to talk about obscure Mountain Dew flavors. <laughs> right? It's like, you rang, Mom? <laughs> yes? <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Well, yeah, we had a blast uh, last yeah. week. Uh, if you did not know, last week was episode 200, uh, and to celebrate, Melissa came down to Oklahoma City, uh, yep. she drove all the way down, spent the entire weekend, uh, my girl f friend and I got to show her around, uh, we got to eat at some cool places, go visit yeah. the comic book store, go to <laughs> yes. the art museum, we explained it all last week, we Very important. a ton of stuff, and it was good, it was fun, but. You are back home. I'm glad you're safe. Uh, mm -hmm. Back to work. Back to all of that stuff. No fun. Yeah. No fun indeed. <laughs> uh, I, I have been destroying all of these sodas here that you yes. gave me as a gift. Uh, this is a Cardinal Cream. Is yes. What this one is. It's a red soda. I brought you a number of sodas from Fitz's, a local mm -hmm. St. Louis soda bottlery. Uh, I'm happy you're enjoying them. Yeah. I don't know if the Cardinal Cream, like, tastes like anything except baseball pride. I don't know if it tastes like anything <laughs> that is red. It's, I would describe it as a berry soda. Okay. But, or like a, yeah, like. Berry, there's maybe a little bit of some cherry in there too, mm -hmm. but like it's it's not so i I think today I also had the black cherry one that you uh -huh. gave me, and I would discord discord like it's it's a it's a cherry soda, but it's not a cola like uh -huh. th this is more in line with if you've had like big red if you're from like Texas or the south of west yeah. like it's more like that, but yeah. Berry, raspberry. I, I don't know if that's the exact flavor, but that seems to be a good bit of just like it's it's a raspberry berry soda. Mm -hmm. It's good. I like it. Good. I'm like glad you lot. enjoy them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that black cherry one though was interesting because when you think like cherry soda, I think of like cherry Coke or cherry Pepsi, right? And that's a cola with <laughs> cherry flavoring, but. Mm -hmm. This is actually just a cherry so soda, right. like an orange soda. It, it yeah, is. you don't see that very often. Mm -hmm. uh, cherry rarely gets to go to the party on its own. It's always no. somebody's wingman. Yeah, there you go. So thank you for all of sure. those. That was a blast. I still have all of the balloons and stuff all piled up <laughs> over here on the floor. Uh, <laughs> cats are unsure of them or just like, what is Ooh. that thing over there? I don't know. <laughs> is this alive? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, well, we are here on a for, a Friday night. Uh, not yeah. our typical night. We kind of had to. I, 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 I was not feeling so great yesterday. Mm. You said you might have to stay late at work. I'm I, not I, sure I worked very late at work. Yes. That sucks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we were like, let's just do tomorrow. Uh, and since we recorded episode 200 uh, on Sunday, it was a much yeah. shorter time period. Right. So this gave us an extra day to live our lives so we can come <laughs> back here and talk about, 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 about all of the stuff that we did. Yeah. 
So there you go. Melissa, how are you? What are you up to I, these days? I am well. I don't know. I worked a lot yesterday. <laughs> we, we had a technical problem with one of our platforms that was preventing a bunch of submissions from moving through. Uh, and then they all did move through and then we had to catch up on them. We've had stuff like that. It's like, uh, it looks like email's not working. Uh, so you can send it. It will be queued and Ugh. you'll get it sometime. <laughs> and oh, all that's, of a sudden, it's just like, blah, here's 30 emails. Yeah. <laughs> blah, indeed. I've lived through a blah this week also. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My week was good. Um, we, I, I've, I feel like since we're watching the final season of, 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 of Fringe this yeah. month, and it's a shorter one it I is feel like i don't have to watch it every single day this right month. so i took i took all of last week and all of this week to not watch it and watch <laughs> all other stuff uh, yeah so i've i've been catching up on a lot of tv uh and and comics and stuff Good. like that i'm i'm now caught up on all the comics that I have, but one v- 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 volume of something that I need to ch- check out. Mm-hmm. I just started uh, Bloodshot Reborn, uh, no. which from the first issue uh, that I read is a good jumping on point if you want to get into the Valiant universe. Nice. Uh, and it's written by one of our favorites, Jeff Lemire. Uh, so, Jeffy! Hey, good stuff, yeah. Um, so yeah, all, all of that. So I've been catching up on stuff. So I have a lot of like TV movie stuff that I want to talk about this week. Uh, okay. So nice. That is, that is what we shall do. We shall. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 201 of the Whatnots Captain's Log, where every week we thirst for the taste of legend. My name is Kyle Springer and I am joined by Melissa Wilkinson. Hello. Melissa, what have you been watching recently? So I drove through the spooky rainy woods on my way back home, and it really put me in the mood to watch a horror movie. I'm worried I've, like, skipped a season. Like, it's August. Uh, It's fully summer. Kids aren't even back to school yet. I think that happens uh, on Monday. They're about to go back to school. But I'm already in the Halloween mood, thanks to that experience. I wanted to watch a horror movie, uh, and I had seen that the final destination series was about to leave HBO max. And I thought I've never seen one of those. That seems like fun. So I watched final destination from the year 2000. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. And your thoughts. I, have you ever seen these? You know, the premise, I, right? I, yeah. I, I, I know enough from like cultural as houses of like what they are. Right. It's a bunch of high schoolers are supposed to go on a class trip to Paris. One of them is having visions. He thinks the plane is going to crash. He, like, uh, starts a scene. He's, like, forced off the plane. A couple other students and a teacher get forced off with him. And, they, you know, like, they're going to take the next flight to Paris. They're going to arrive after the last rest of the class. And then the plane explodes. And they're like, oh, oh, boy, we escaped death. Yeah. But no, death expected them to die. And death is still coming for them. So it's going to kill everybody else in these inventive Rube Goldbergian ways. Uh, it's written by two guys who wrote episodes of the X-Files. It feels vaguely like that. Sure, if you, yeah. It came out in 2000, but it is a good like 90s teen horror movie. I mean, it's no scream, but what is? Yeah. And I wanted to recap one scene where the main character, uh, the played by the, the kid who was Casper in the Casper movie, he's, he's the one who's been having these visions. Mm-hmm. And he's really distraught about you know, all his classmates that died and he couldn't save them. And he's still got this lingering sense of dread. And he's trying to map out, like, what happened? Why did the plane go down? He's got, we, we see him at his desk, at his 90s teen desk. And it's covered in, like, books about airplane design and maps and charts and things like that. You can tell he's drinking coffee. He's been at this all night trying to understand the plane crash. He looks distressed. And he, he needs the distraction. So he reaches open his desk drawer and he pulls open a Hustler magazine. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> not because of horniness, but out of the desire to feel anything that isn't plain crash distress. I understand. Yeah. Right. yeah. He's, flipping, he's flipping through a Hustler 
And then he, then he hears a noise and there's an owl peering at him outside the window. And then he yells and he throws the Hustler magazine at the owl. <laughs> window closed. Hustler will not reach the owl. And instead, <laughs> the Hustler bounces off the window and it goes through a fan and it gets chopped up into pieces. <laughs> So he's ruined it. His one hustler, his one chance at distraction, gone. And then, like, one of the pieces of magazine, like, that's been torn to little bits, like, floats and lands on his leg. And he looks at it, and it's, like, a bit of a word, and it says Todd. And then he thinks, oh, no, my friend Todd will die. I have to go save Todd. That's wild. Right. I just needed to tell you about that. I just needed you to know that the movie Final Destination involves the kid from Casper throwing a porn magazine at an owl. If I'm not mistaken, that actor, Devin Sawa. Yes, uh, he has is, a name. I knew he had a name. I shouldn't yeah. just call him the kid from Casper. I'm sure he has I, many credits. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's the actor that plays Stan in Eminem's song Stan. He's what? the like obsessed. <laughs> he's the like the obsessed. F- 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 I think. I think. <laughs> I I could be wrong there. I but. believe that to be true. Th- yeah. That seems right. Because I I he was on the kind of funny podcast at one point, and I remember watching that one. I think that was one of the things of like, how did you go from Casper to Stan <laughs> to Final <laughs> Destination? Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, that's like a one of those odd fun facts that's uselessly mm-hmm. r- 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 rattling up in my head. <laughs> Good. Valuable. Final Destiny. How many of those have they made? Now, I believe like five. Of them? No, I think it's only five. I think it's like five. there's one, two, three, and f- maybe one of them's in 3D and one of them's called like the Final Destination. <laughs> Yeah, one of it's, those like awkward reboot things where they want yeah. to use the original name. Yeah. Like, uh, well, they're all on HBO Max until the end of the month. If you feel any call to watch Final Destinations. Cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. Let me ask you this, because here's uh-huh. my next like big question that I want to talk about uh, on the show here. What movies or TV shows from this year? Do you think are underrated? Is is, is there I, one that's coming to mind, like a movie you've gone to the? the well, you're the one see? who wrote this down, so you must have an answer. What do yes, you think is underrated? I do. Um. So I I I've like I said been catching up and watching a number of things. Uh. Recently, I checked out uh Blade Runner Black Lotus. Um, oh, it was a collaboration between Adult Swim and Crunchyroll. Uh, huh. And I know Sinichiro Watanabe from Cowboy Bebop fame is like one of the creative leads of mm-hmm. this. I know that Watanabe also did a Blade Runner anime movie. Uh, it was bla- like Blade Runner 2022. Uh, and there's a big. Oh, that's today. Out. Yeah, there's a big <laughs> bell, 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 bell out that happens uh which they reference in black lotus and black lotus also kind of serves as a prequel to blade runner 2449 black lotus takes place in 2030 i think if i'm not mistaken or like 2030 ish um but you see a younger version of jared character in yeah. There. Yeah. And you see how he gets his uh, like the cataracts on his eyes. Right. And, 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 and stuff like that. Um, so just I, I like I, I like Blade Runner, especially as a fan of cyberpunk stuff. But mm-hmm. I've not really dived into kind of these side stories that are out there. Yeah. That I don't think a lot of people know exist Um that they 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 have started to flesh out that continuity and that story and how they got to where things were in 2049 and stuff like that um which i guess all that stuff is based off of do androids dream of electric 
sheep, right? It's mm -hmm. like loosely based off of that. Yes, some, loosely. Somehow. Uh, so there, there is probably some stuff from, th you, you know, that, that book that they can p pull in and reference that maybe was not in the original movie. Um, but I watched that and that was fantastic. That was all CGI. Um, mm -hmm. It was, it, 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 was, it had incredible lighting and textures just on the buildings and like the scenery Ooh. and the sets look incredible Good. the character like mo models are g -g 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 good and the like f the fluidity of the of the animation is fantastic my only critique of that uh -huh. show is i i don't think it's stylized enough <laughs> it's it's very subtly stylized um like mm. the the characters are supposed to they, they are meant to look like real people some of the characters look like the actors that play them uh and, and stuff like that but there's a like very subtle stylization that's like oh their eyelashes are like thicker like cones like that's not what eyelashes <laughs> look like in a way, a way that's like you can tell right uh -huh. there was also no texture on anyone's skin so everyone looked real plasticky like like old school like toy story like everything looks okay plastic yeah. and that kind of took me out of it of just like you're trying to tell me these people are real and they have <laughs> no pores. Like they're they're just they all have perfect skin. They're plastic. Well, it's it's the future. We evolved beyond the need for pores. I guess so. Um, but yeah, it it just it was a we layered like uncanny valley where like everything else looked like so real, and 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 then it was just like and then there's these like slightly plasticky people walking around in there, and it's just like. Looks a little bit strange, but it was mm -hmm. fantastic. I liked it a lot. Um, good to one, hear. Th that one was good. But the thing that I actually want to talk about is DMZ, uh, which is on HBO Max as well. I've been going through all my HBO Max stuff. Um, mm -hmm. DMZ came out, I don't know, a couple months ago at this point. And I remember them announcing the release date. Date. They announced the release date and it was like it was out in like two weeks. And I was like, holy shit. I one didn't know that they were even making this. Two, they mm -hmm. already made it. Three, it's out in two weeks. How like what the hell? How did I not know that this what was is it? a thing? So this is based off of a comic book. Um okay. it's one that uh myself and Paul read for the whatnots a long, long time okay. ago in one of our like uh crunchy peanut butter specials that they basically our equivalent of our end of the month special where we read something that's a lot longer uh in in <laughs> chunks. Um, we should bring back the name crunchy peanut butter i always liked it i don't know how it conveys its meaning but it does i it, understand it, it was like it was it was the same great taste but just a bigger chunk so it was it's yeah it's it's, 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 it's that it's the chunk and the creamy goodness that it's you already chunk. like right yeah welcome so, to the chunk you've been looking go. for <laughs> um but yeah it's based off of a comic uh, and we read it for a podcast and I ended up really, really enjoying the comic. Mm. I, th I thought it was fantastic. Um, it was written in the early 2000s and the premise is one that I think nowadays. I don't know if people would take to it really well. It's maybe a little mm. too on the nose for what's happening politically here in America. Mm -hmm. It is a comic about the United States in a second civil war in modern mm -hmm. day times. And in New York, there is a DMZ, a demilitarized mm. zone that they have mm. kind of walled off. And the people who got stuck inside, they're just stuck there. Um, and it's been like a standstill for years now. And no one on the outside really knows what has happened on the inside. 
So in the comics, they send a journalist uh, in. And uh-huh. this is the first time that, that like, is that someone has been allowed in to the d- 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 to the DMZ. Uh, and the comic is kind of about just exploring it and figuring out who the people are, what's happened, how have they survived. Uh, and when the journalist gets in there, he like discovers they have their own economy they have their like a brand new political system inside there they're conducting elections and stuff like that there's uh sections that uh, of new york that are now like the wild lands and you don't go out there because all the zoo animals that escaped are now <laughs> out, out, there, out there um Different g- 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 gangs control different parts of the city and stuff like that, and so it's it's an it's an exploration of this kind of dystopian America, uh, and like I said, in the midst of a civil war, which might be a little too on the nose for what's happening in mm-hmm. um, in America now, but it's also not really about that, and it was mm-hmm. written in the early 2000s so on one hand maybe kind of prophetic but again is not like it's it's not about that per se Mm. it's about like finding these human stories in the midst of of struggle and stuff like that they do have big like sweeping story arcs but every now and then you'll just get maybe a one shot or a two episode arc of just some character who's out there, uh, just in the midst of this. For example, some like the the ho- ho- homeless guy that you think is crazy, right? And he's out there spatting n- 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 nonsense. You might mm. find out that he's actually like he used to work as a sec- a security g- 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 guard at a m- m- a museum. And he's stashed like all of these famous paintings and has wow. like like hidden them away. And he's actually like secretly one of the richest people because he has all <laughs> of these like works of art. But he's like just in the midst of all of this chaos has just fallen on hard times. Right. And like people don't go near him because they think he's crazy and he's speaking to himself and, and stuff like that. It's it just like, holy moly. like. This guy has this stuff just stashed away here and no one knows. Amazing. Mm. This is great. Um, so, yeah, they do all sorts of stuff like that. But in the show, the show does things a little differently. Uh, it, Wikipedia is now saying it's a mini series, so I don't know if they're going to get a season two. Um, there's only four oh. episodes, so it's really short. I've watched the first three so far, uh, and I think it's fantastic. Um, it, it is one you don't want to miss. This is my, like, this is an underrated show of this year. Like, holy shit, this is really good. However, uh, Rotten Tomatoes right now has this at, like, a 50%. It's at, mm. like, a f- like a, from, like, 13 or 14 reviews, it's at, like, a 5.9, like, star rating. And so people aren't really liking it, but I'm, I'm I'm sitting here like, what, what show are you guys watching? Like, <laughs> this is actually pretty good. I like this. Um, but the the show doesn't even have that journalist character who's the main oh. character of the show. Instead, they follow one of the side characters from the comic and tell the story from her perspective that she was that she lived uh in the spot that would become the DMZ and day one when it ha- happened, she made it out, but got separated from her child. Uh and has spent the last eight years looking for him on both sides of the of the conflict, uh, but has never made it into the DMZ. So she thinks he must be in the in the air, and so she finds a way to smuggle herself inside uh, to then 
discover this like vibe economy and all these people struggling and surviving and just all sorts of stuff and it's a really good show and the nice. main character is played by rosario dawson ah! she's fantastic um, i always love rosario dawson the other actor, the guy that plays Parco, uh, let me see if I can find his, let's see, who plays uh, Parco in DMZ. Is that his name? Benjamin Barat. Um, oh, yeah. yeah he's also, in, always reliable. All sorts of stuff. Yeah, he's he's in the, in the show, too. Um, there's a few people you might recognize but yeah it's real fast might just be four episodes and i hope this gets a season two there is much much more to the story that they can pull on in this but this is if if you've read the comic which is a pretty substantially sized comic um this i also feel like is a good like if you just want to watch a quick version of it, this is a good one to check out. I feel like it's a good adaption. Um, and it's strange to me they don't have the main character from the comic, but it's an interesting way to do an adaption that mm. I feel like they're doing a lot of the same story, a lot of the same characters and, and stuff like that, but it is their own story still so like i i like having read the comic i still feel like i'm coming in to something new and that things might change or might not like oh in the book they did this and that's how the book it like ended up uh this might do something completely different i think it's fantastic it looks amazing it's beautiful i think it's shot really really well it has this really gritty like shaky cam like you're in the mix like in the lower with them i i think it looks fantastic underrated absolutely mm -hmm. go check it out on hbo yeah. max dmz i i do remember scrolling past it now uh, it was brought in by Rosario Dawson, but I was yep. turned away by the idea of dystopias. It can't handle a dystopia. It's, it's not. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Like, it's it's a civil war in America. It's a dystopia. But it's there. There is some of that. Like, you, you do see people struggling, but it's not like you're walking dead style. Like, it's not it's not in apocalypse. Okay. Like, the world still okay. exists. It's just this one zone that is so like has. Completely... It's an escape from New York. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just that like that one little section that has just had to completely change their way of life because they've been walled off and cut off from every from everything else. Um, so it's 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 neat. And yeah, there are things that will make you tear up there is like hopeful stuff in there that's just like this is awesome this is so cool uh so yeah i high, highly recommend it good stuff okay good good to hear always yeah. good to hear a recommendation for an, an undervalued there's so many properties to see that sometimes mm -hmm. you will just miss one right and, and and that's the thing that's happening today too right you hear like all of these screenwriters on Twitter or whoever just be being like, hey, it's so hard to sell an original idea nowadays. Like these corporations that own Marvel and DC and Predator and all of this stuff, right? Like they have these long standing. The big three Marvel, DC, Predator. I'm, I'm yeah. Uh, <laughs> But but like they have these long standing franchises that they know will make money. And so it's simpler to just keep making stories in those universes rather than to try something new that who knows if people will like this thing. So when there is stuff that is just like it's it's new or they've not made in a adaption of this book or this comic yet it's just like this is this is kind of cool we could 
we could tell some more stories here, guys. Like, you, like you should look, pay attention. It's here. It's right there. <laughs> mm-hmm. So there you go. That's what I've been up to. That's what I've been watching. Good. Indeed, indeed. Uh, well, I think that's a good time for us to take a break for some housekeeping. And then we will be right back with the second half of the show after that. We put a lot of hard work into the shows that we make. And yes, we make multiple different shows here at The Whatnots. And we'd love it if you check them all out. You can find out more information on our website at thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in The Whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. If you want to support what we do here at The Whatnots, patreon.com slash The Whatnots is the best place to do that. You can support us for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all kinds of exclusive content at the $3 tier. You can also get a shout out and a thank you on all of our shows at the $5 tier. You can support us on Twitch by subscribing to our channel at twitch.tv slash the whatnots. And we would love to have you all join us for our live streams and talk with us in the chat. And lastly, we have merch. If you'd like to grab yourself a shirt or a sweatshirt or a mug or something else, go to the whatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. And we are back. A big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you so Thank much you. for checking us out, for supporting us. Thank you. It means a lot. We appreciate it. Um, cool things that we've been up to here at The Whatnots. Of course, I mentioned at the start that last week Melissa came down. We got to record in person. Uh, got to detail our trip. Uh, so go check out that one. That was a lot of fun. Um, we also got to record the review show in person. We got to talk about the Muppet movie, uh, yes. which was a lot of fun. So go check out episode 217 <laughs> of the Whatnots review show that we did live and in person. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, this next week on the review show, we are talking about the Netflix movie The Gray Man, which I watched yes. today as well. Me too. Um, yeah, so that is what we will be talking about this weekend. So keep your eyes out for that. Uh, and then Crossplay, our video game podcast, uh, this actually kind of worked out perfectly. So a oh. while back, Melissa, you had Ignacio come on to your podcast to talk about some Digimon. Do you want to mention that first? Yeah, I, I do another podcast with my brother Jams called Saturday Morning Obscurities, where we talk about obscure old kid shows you feel like only you remember uh, on various levels of the obscurity uh, spectrum. Sometimes we do a Saturday Morning Giant episode about something that's very well known. Sometimes it's something we kind of remember from our childhood. Sometimes we go find a weird 80s cartoon we've never heard of, and then we have to learn about that. Ignacio did come on to join us to talk about Digimon Tamers. Yeah. So, uh, D Ignacio cares very, very much about Digimon. So it is, uh, it's a big episode. He does, yeah. Uh, well, he, yeah, he is a big Digimon fan. And two weeks ago, Digimon Survive came out. He's been playing it. Uh, Alan has been playing it on cross play so they've been talking digimon nonstop on on cross play is it game of the year material maybe not but is it really good digimon maybe you'll have to go see and find out um so <laughs> the series of words didn't end up telling me anything <laughs> <laughs> well if you're a digimon fan and you want to find out their opinions on Digimon Survive. You can go listen to our video game podcast mm. crossplay. Uh, but yeah, that is about it for housekeeping. So let's get on to the second half of the show. Melissa. Yeah. Yes. You have a question. I, d I have a question. You sure do. Yes, I do. Down in the notes. Right now, we're in a time where DC has said they are going to make a 10 year plan about what to do about their movies. I think they've had 
10 years a little too late there, DC, I, but okay. I think they have had some plans. They've had miniature plans, but I think now they're in the process of making one I have master of a plan. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> 12% of a plan. <laughs> That's been them. And sometimes that 12% really works out. There have been some gems in there. I love Shazam. I greatly look forward to Shazam too. Yeah. The, the Batman. Good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You heard it here first, folks. The Batman good. Uh, th- th- there have been wins in there, but it's been a bumpy road, and they're now working on a unified thesis of the DC Cinematic Universe for the next decade. And they thought here, as we break off another hundo, as we are on episode 201 of the Captain's Log, what is our 10-year plan? Where are we going in 10 years? Well, of course, I'll have my cybernetic arm by then. Of course. So, yeah. Um, probably retelling the same, like, camp stories that I've already <laughs> shared on the podcast. One time I had two cotton candies. Right, yeah. They'll, they'll do that. Like, hey, Melissa, t- t- tell us about that weird obelisk you found in that, oh, in that one. Yeah. <laughs> Was it a sex cult? You never know. It was not. It was not. It's just a, a town that possibly involves swingers and does definitely involve an obelisk. I, I will do an investigation into that town. I think eventually you will come up here and you will visit me. I will definitely yes. take you to the I, obelisk. I need to see the giant phallic object. <laughs> it's not. I mean, it's your classic obelisk. It's no phallic than any other obelisk. Yeah. Right. Uh, we will go there. We could do an entire like pseudo true crime investigation into Newtown. Amazing. <laughs> Ten years down the road. Um, I don't know, man. That means I would be 40 something. I'd be like 41, <laughs> 42. Right. We, uh, and I'm not talking about what is the 10 year plan for our individual lives, but this is a podcast about our lives. So right. we will like. I will design my like wedding playlist live on the podcast. <laughs> we will do these things. You'll but what somehow, are we thinking? <laughs> you'll you'll somehow become the owner of your local mall. <laughs> <laughs> I can't own the galleria. I wish I was such a big I would love to own part of the galleria. I'd love to own a column. Like just have my name inscribed in a plaque on a single column. Right, I'd love yeah. to own the third floor of Dillard's, not the first two, the third floor of Dillard's. On the Wilkinson floor. <laughs> that's funny. Um, I don't know. Like, I like that. That's the thing. Like, I. This podcast has always been in my mind, just that like off topic mishmash of it can mm-hmm. be whatever it needs to be. If we want to sit here and talk about pop culture for an hour, like we can do that. If we want to sit down and have a more serious discussion on mental health and stuff like that, we could do, do, do that. If we want to play some kind of trivia game, some bingo game, like we can do that. Like th- there's all sorts of stuff that we can do on on here. If we want to sit here and have a pancake party and just eat pancakes. Oh, we should have a we, pancake party. We we. we talk about our week and stuff like that like that's exactly what this podcast is so i i kind of hope it doesn't change like that's what i want it to be right the year is 2032 we're talking about dr strange six and we're reviewing new mountain dew a future lemon it's like the taste of thirds by mountain dew right (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we've got rings that say mountain and dew <laughs> yeah it's, it's like the the knuckle tattoos right. and stuff it says m-t-n-d-e-w on it <laughs> we have a shirt that looks like the run dmc logo but it says it's mountain, mountain dew, dew. <laughs> we could probably do that <laughs> that's funny um yeah, I like I what would I like the podcast to look like? I I I want the technology to be different. I mean, think about where the technology was a decade ago. Like we barely had social media. Like that that was still it was I mean, 2012. We it was, we had sure. it. We, we, it existed. We had I don't know it. if Instagram yes. existed yet, but like 
Facebook, Twitter, we had those it, were in yes. full swing. I was on Pinterest. Right. We Tum- had it. Tumblr, remember yes, that? But it like it's it wasn't what it is today. If that yeah. makes sense. Like it's still like it was still on, on its like upward incline where it's like right. nowadays I feel like everyone is just like Ugh, social media. Mm. I guess you, you know, right. Um, but even like a few years before that, we didn't have social media all that much. Like, mm. YouTube was barely a th- like th- th- think about like 2000, like 2006 to like 2009 when oh, that yeah. stuff was yeah. like first starting right things can change so fast uh with what the technology is it'd be interesting if like more like 3d or hollow technology was a more like consumer thing wow right so we could have like a a 3d like we, we could have like a vr podcast set that our holograms would be oh, in. Oh, man. And, like, you as a virtual audience could, like, sit there in studio uh, <gasps> and, like, walk around the, stu- the studio and see all my Street Shark action figures and, and stuff like that. I'll still have all of my Street Shark action <laughs> figures. Maybe by then right? they'll have invented new Street Sharks. <laughs> Maybe. Um, Maybe Street Sharks will come back. <laughs> a huge <laughs> renaissance for Street Sharks. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Michael Bay's Street Sharks. <laughs> um, I, yeah, like I, I, I think something like that would be neat. Ten years. That'd down be cool. The I the idea of having podcasts, a virtual set. I remember on, I forget which retrospective it was, but it was uh, when you were still doing the show with Paul. And I tuned in. I listened to you guys on Twitch. Yeah. And you were talking about how you, you should have so a physical you were office. There. That, was, that, 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 that right. was the the first time that you <laughs> appeared. <laughs> on the I show. manifested myself. Paul volunteered me into being the secretary. <laughs> I was the receptionist. <laughs> this was my role. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'll, I'll I'll still do. I can I can do both Which, jobs. I can have it all. That's the thing. He d- doesn't know. I, I have no idea if he listens to the show. I doubt he does. Um, <laughs> but it, it like he didn't know you when you said like no, when, when no. you first hopped on. So to him to to be like, yeah, you can be our receptionist is actually kind of spot on. Like to, <laughs> to, to have you just be the office woman of of the That's whatnot true. Is, yes. is like wow. Yeah, I. <laughs> I I am the Janine Melnitz of the show. <laughs> what I've always wanted to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, you, you were saying we were interested in like a physical right. space. And now now we straight skip to what if we had a virtual studio? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I I would still love a virtual or not like a a physical space. Like if we mm. had a podcast studio, I think that'd be amazing um where we could just come in and make content and you know like if, if this could actually be our job yeah that'd be am- amazing i think that'd i be just great. wish i if i could just make enough money off of this to have a dedicated podcast room like you do and i don't have to make my podcast room and my bedroom the same place <laughs> right yeah yeah um yeah i just like stuff like that even if it's not like full time that we do this Mm. stuff but like enough where it's like okay you know what i can actually think about getting a part-time job instead Mm. and just making that be like hey i need to be part-time but salaried if if that's even possible at certain spots right but just like uh like you 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 can do half a year like part-time here at the whatnots part-time at the local mall (laughs) (laughs) um Something like that would would that'd be neat. I would love to actually be able to pay people on yeah. Because right now all of our Patreon stuff goes back into the show to pay mm. all of our hosting fees and and stuff like that. Um, but one day it 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 is a goal. And like these are less ten year plans and more of ten year wishes. We don't have like a tangible way yes. to get these besides uh. Just doing what we're doing and saying, please. 
I would love if we got to the point where the Patreon money at least paid for like uh, our movie tickets when we do a reactor core episode, like yeah. to pay for me to go see uh, Secret Wars. Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Not that I yeah. wouldn't go see it anyway, but it would right. be nice. It would be nice if there's like something new, something outside of our usual realms that we want to go out and try. If like, I don't know, if I could get the 10 bucks back. <laughs> Pay is for all of our subscriptions harvesters right. to Marvel and DC and Comixology and, and Predator. Like yeah. <laughs> the Predator Unlimited and app. Predator app, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, that's, stuff like that would be nice. I mean, we're so we, we are almost at 500 subscribers on YouTube. Nice. Uh, which is a huge achievement for us, considering we've been doing this for five years, going on six years now. Um, and at a thousand, you can start to monetize your channel. Uh, oh. I, you have to have uh, like a thousand subscribers and so much watch time uh, like per month, I, I think is when you can start to monetize. Uh, so hopefully that will happen in the next couple years here. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, Cause even if we like, look, it's not much, but if we can make 10 bucks a month off of would be our, nice. our, our, our YouTube, that'd be great. It's like 120 bucks a year. That'd be amazing. Uh, it, it, even if we just made like, 50 bucks a year yeah 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 would be incredible because that could pay for some of our hosting and take the pressure off the patreon to be self-sustaining and and stuff like that um yeah be neat to be like melissa here's your 25 dollars here's my allowance yeah yeah thank you for being on the show is um, <laughs> stuff like that you it, send me one Chili's gift card for Christmas <laughs> pay you a Chili's gift card <laughs> that'd be awful <laughs> um, something else that I thought of early on uh, was making the Whatnots an actual company uh, yeah. like the Whatnots LLC uh, or stuff like that uh, again we, we're just we're so small that it doesn't really make sense mm, for mm. us to do that because there's also fees involved with that stuff um but, but yeah who knows who knows yeah these are yeah, f- you've, f- f- future plans hopefully. you you've talked before about how you'd like to go to a con i would love to do that yeah you know both of us just go to a con as as ourselves as citizens but maybe we get like business cards or stickers or something we hand them out to people like we have a podcast yeah yo we see you d- d- drew an illustration of batman here are several episodes where we talked about batman indeed indeed um yeah stuff like that would be neat let's um, absolutely let's put arbitrary things on the calendar okay like let's make a literal 10-year plan uh <laughs> What is one episode we want to do in one arbitrary date? Um, like, uh, like what? Well, what is the content that we want to do on that episode? By like, an let's arbitrary say, date. Uh, it, it, July twenty twenty six. We eat every flavor of Pringles. Okay, and we <laughs> we have to see if we remember that. By the time June 2026 rolls around, we have to buy every Prangle. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a good, good one. Yeah, we could do something like that. Um, I, I'm still gunning for that Mountain Dew sp- sp- sponsorship, right? Uh, to, to have Mountain Dew tweet us uh, by, by 2026. I would love that. Yeah, just, just <laughs> acknowledge us witness us <laughs> yeah <laughs> notice me senpai um that'd be witness really funny us in more tan do <laughs> um i th- i think it'd be fun to have someone from the new rock stars on the podcast 
Oh boy. I for how often we mention them, for what a touchstone they are in my life. The last night when I I had to work a lot of overtime, or not overtime, just like have a very late night, a long day catching up on stuff. I went through like three and a half episodes of The Break Room, their hour long live show. Yeah. The Break Room gets me through the week. Good stuff. Um <laughs> what else? Let's I, let's talk to Jeff Lemire. You sure? Yeah. Give him our like you're 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 the only creator in our the Hall of Fame as of right now. We haven't really added anyone else yet, but you're in there. Here you go. Here's an award. Wait. What not's Hall of Fame first inductee? I, see, <laughs> I do. I am starting to collect a more organized list of who are the review show three timers, and as we keep growing, mm. that'll we'll get to like a five timers list. Uh, because t- we know that the number one most appearing actor on the review show is inexplicably Bruce Willis. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which neither of us are major Bruce Willis fans. I mean, it just happened. We just looked yeah. up one day. It's like weird. We've talked about Bruce Willis movies a lot. So I am writing a list of who has been on the show at least three times. Amazing. Um, do you have any guesses who of whom might be in the three timers club? I'm not done calculating, but I have like a dozen or so names. Oh, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think here. Uh, actually, I, I, I don't even know. I, I don't even have the foggiest. Well, uh, d- this weekend we're going to be talking about the Gray Man, and that will induct Chris Evans into the Three Timers okay. Club. Yeah, I can uh, see that. Ep- yes, for episode one hundred, we both brought to the table what we believe to be the best superhero movie, and you brought Captain America: The Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. and we watched Knives Out uh, ah, sometime last year. This also, I believe, puts Ana de Armas in the Two Timers Club. I'm keeping track of the rising stars of who who can be inducted into the three timers club upon one more appearance. Okay. Okay. Um interesting. I I would like to have another one of our YouTube shorts go viral. Um in the next like two years so we've had one <laughs> we've had one go viral and that was the I, uh the the triple r one r r of course yeah. <laughs> so, which is now which is still by long shot our most watched wow video. yeah let's well let's hope youtube shorts continues as, as a platform as a medium yeah yeah i mean i i I think it will. I I, I love to watch the ones you put up. I don't often watch ones from other people, but I like when you make little clips of these. This is something I do want to do. I want to cut together like uh, the review, the the Captain's Log highlights reel. Sure. What are our best moments? What's our best of? Do it for the review show. Do it for for anything. I don't know. I would like to have more isolated clips available to people outside of these like hour, hour and a half long podcast episodes. For sure. Yeah. Helps it 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 helps if we f- format our content in that way too. Like that's also like just like hey, let's do a little five minute segment on this, and then you can just c- cut out that segment right and be like, hey, here's a five minute video right. of the thing. Like with your, your pocket like, uh reactor cores, where you react to like a the BTS meal. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, stuff like. <laughs> I remember that our let's eats <laughs> the like like three of them that we've done, 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 done. Let's do it again. <laughs> like let's order each other a Domino's or something. Yeah. Um. Oh, let's yeah, let's like. To... Man, this would take some money, but let's like do a go puff order to each other's houses with some alcohol, and you have to like concoct a cocktail that I design for you. Interesting. That's a good, 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 good one. Unfortunately, GoPuff d- doesn't deliver to me right now. So hopefully, within the next ten huh. years, that'll be a what right. uh, thing. Right? Get GoPuff to deliver. 
<laughs> live on the show. <laughs> um, I don't know. There's like, there's just there's so much fun things to think about that we could do. I I hope so that often. I hope that recording technology gets to the point where we can do like live in the field recordings we record from the third floor of dillard's <laughs> live from chili's it's kyle <laughs> exactly we gotta do a live from chili's <laughs> <laughs> um yeah we could do <laughs> that's really that's actually not a bad idea actually <laughs> to have it like it be a like i i i would have to go record myself eating different things at Chili's multiple times, or at least in like different outfits, uh, and and just be like, you know, in Family Guy where the, the, they did yeah that that skit where they're like, and now to what's his name for the weather, and it's, yes, it's, it's which of them, and he, he's like, it's gonna rain, and that's yeah. it. That's all he says. That would be yes. m- like me. That that would be our our skit. Like, and now we go to uh, Kyle Springer, our, who's alive in the field at Chili's. Local and it's Chili's. Me, and it's, it's, it's me sitting there, like I'm eating a burger, and th- that's it. <laughs> like I have a milkshake. That's it. I no, have I, spicy fries. <laughs> you and I, and and whoever many of our guests want to join us, <laughs> we go to a Chili's. We eat everything on the appetizer menu, at least. And the lava crunch cakes. I have a lava cake. <laughs> I, want us, I want us to go to get the appetizer sampler in a series of chain bar and girls and compare the appetizer samplers. Super We've eaten like 12 podcast. different kinds of mozzarella sticks. Our bodies are mostly mozzarella. <laughs> Our bodies are mostly stick. <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. You've got panko lung. I don't, I don't know how much longer you have. Um, so something else that I have mentioned off and on, uh, briefly, uh, from t- off and on from time to time here and there who knows what i would like to get a third permanent host on that would be show. nice yeah it's um, I, d- I i enjoy these talks but i i do also enjoy being in a group setting with additional yeah. people sometimes yeah and and if if we have three or ideally four consistent mm-hmm. members on the captain's log uh, like that, and especially if one knows how to, and is it, it, it can like put the podcast together yeah. and record it and stuff like that. That would help a ton because if, if I happen to be sick, then we have to right. postpone. If yeah. it's just us, there's just two, none, right? Yeah, there's just none. But if someone else can take over that role, then it's just like, well, you three can do the podcast, or you two can do the podcast, and just hang out and have fun and we know it'll be up uh that 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 week right and that way you can feel like hey i've had a busy week at work i kind of just need to relax uh, then you can yeah. just be like i'm gonna take the week off i'm i'm going to a play and i can't reschedule because then i'm going to another play <laughs> i have too many plays this week can't do it mm-hmm. yeah I'll come back next um, week and talk about plays. Yeah. I this one's more of whatnots in general. I would love to have a comic book show on the whatnots mm. somehow. Some way. But about like new was, comic books? Yeah. Like kind of in a crossplay yeah, style? Yeah, just like weekly comic book show. Uh whether it's new stuff that hit the stands that week or like me i mainly use the marvel unlimited app which is three months behind the new books and then the dc app is six months back so there is it's just like well hey what's new on the apps this this Mm -hmm. right something like that could work too um but yeah just recent comic book news stuff Mm -hmm. like that I don't know, because like I, I there's comic book news that happens that I'm interested in and all that stuff. But I know if I b- brought it here 
to this show, you'd have no idea what I'm talking I, about. You, you know the part in Good Burger where they give Kel the... They, Ed, Ed is his name in the film. Yeah. They give Ed the, the contract to like sell his Ed sauce to Mondo Burger and he's looking it over and he's like, mm-hmm, yes. Yes, I know some of these words. <laughs> yeah. I think that's that's me. Yep, exactly. Or or to even have like a a podcast or two about like a specific piece of media, I would love a Gundam podcast. That'd be fantastic, right? Um, but that's just that. Uh, yeah, that's just me being like, oh, one day when I retire, right. and I have all the time in the world. <laughs> when I retire. Retire to ever... become a professional Gundam. Right. Oh, yeah. Local g- g- Gundam I, expert. That's me. I, I've talked before about how I do want to do a Lost podcast at some point in my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something like that would be really, really fun. But even like, like instead of like how we do our end of the month specials on the review show, what if we just did it like each week was the next two episodes of this show? And we just mm-hmm. talk about the, the, those ones. Yeah, and, which I know like, is something uh, a lot, a lot of, of other yeah. podcast networks do. Like they do, like they have e- individual feeds for each individual show they want to talk about, new or old. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, stuff like that would be fantastic. Just to be to expand, have more people on the crew. Yeah. Uh, Stuff we had like to cool. reach out to more guests. It's something I I often want, uh, and then I think about how t- Twitter stresses me out, and I don't want to put in the legwork of doing the back and forth to schedule somebody to be on the podcast. I just want to point at somebody and be like, "You, do you, 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 you free you on can, Thursday? You can point me in their d- 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 direction." And, and then, then you then have to yeah. explain. I don't know who you are, but my co-host does. Yes. But she didn't want to be here. Yeah, she will be here when we record. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I think that's that. That's where I'd like to be in ten right. years. I, I hope we can grow. I think as the Captain's Log is a show that is uh, Seinfeldian in that it is about nothing. It's yep. difficult to pitch to people. Uh, it's difficult for people to know what it is and what it isn't. But I think that also gives us a. A tremendous field to play in. We anybody can come on and talk about anything yeah. <laughs> that they are passionate about. Absolutely. We've got room for it. Absolutely. Um. Well, yeah. I think the only other piece of housekeeping that I did not mention earlier was that She Hulk starts this next week. Uh, yes. So I'm super excited about that. It's on Thursdays, Thursdays now. Yeah. Well, I. So. I I am a little annoyed that I wrote it on my calendar and then like the day after I wrote it on my calendar, they changed the day from Wednesday to Thursday. So now my calendar has a mistake on it. Yep. Um, yeah, that that that, that always sucks. But uh, I wrote yeah. it in pen. Thir- I put his Hulk sticker on Wednesday. I can't peel him off and move him to Thursday. Oh, yeah. Hulk is already so angry that he's on the wrong day. <laughs> 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 So I, I did see something on Twitter that apparently someone on Reddit, like today or recently, I'm not sure, found some legal documents that might suggest Universal's uh, like solo movie rights to the Hulk might be up in like June 2023. Huh. Uh, so if Marvel wants to buy them out and buy the rights to that character potentially could do it then um mm. but who who knows exactly how that that works there so yeah could could, could be neat could be neat we shall see but well, that means next thursday we will yeah. not only be recording uh the captain's log but i'm assuming sometime just a little bit before that uh melissa you and i will be starting our reactions to she hulk That'll be nice. I look forward to it. It looks like fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kyle, we've talked. I don't remember if we had this conversation on air or not. We've talked about doing an episode of the Captain's Log where our topic of the week is that you and I have switched podcast subscriptions. Yes. So we've talked more about how we really do not listen to the same other podcasts. Right. Yeah. 
Uh, do we do we want to go ahead and and put that in for next week? Do we want to discuss what we so, are going to trade to each other? My first question is this: Do you want to do it mm. for a week or for two weeks? Because I, one of my thoughts is so the, 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 the idea is yeah, like I give you a, a one, two, or three of the podcasts I listen to. I'm not sure how much we'll mm. decide that at a sec here. Uh, but I give you some podcasts that I listen to. You listen to those mm-hmm. for that week. I listen to the ones that you ass- assign me. And then yeah. we report back on the captain's log yes. to fill each other in on what happened. Yeah. And all that stuff and what they talked about. Um, yeah. Which I, I think is a great idea. You, you, you came up with that one. One of the things that I always like to tell people when I'm like, pitching a podcast uh-huh. to them or if i'm trying to convince them to listen to our show is i always want to get them to listen to more than one like hey just yeah. st- stick with it for three weeks or for a month right and that's it and if you don't like it after that you don't have to right like you can go your own way so there's a little bit of value in sticking with it for multiple weeks but I don't want to burden you for like, let's do a whole month and switch. Like that's a, maybe a little <laughs> too much. Um, so I, I feel like it it's one week or two weeks. I'm thinking one week and that can be okay, like the cool. most recent episode of whatever podcast it is. It, it, like if it releases every other week, it's the previous episode, even if one didn't come out that calendar week. I feel like this is less about us selling each other on our shows and more of well, like the right. wacky. When I thought of this, I thought of those YouTube challenges that are like, I dressed out of my boyfriend's closet for the week, stuff like that. Like, sure, yeah. That's the space yeah. we're in. No, this no, is I, experiential. I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to convince you to l- listen to my sh- right. sh- shows, but some of like, like what we do here on this show, like there is a bit of continuity of what we do from week to week, right? <laughs> yeah. So like, they're it like, whoa, 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 like I'm thinking of like, what if something happens on one of these shows but the story's like like hey we'll report back next week of what happens exactly with this adventure here there might be something like that so that's why i just like i was like let me just ask this just to make sure because we we, 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 we had at first just said let's just do this one one i was thinking one week's worth, but like it's up to you. If you start a podcast episode and you want some context, you can go back. You oh, can sure. listen to as many episodes as you want. Sure. Also, like the podcasts I'm going to pitch are all like slightly on the longer side. So I don't want to have you in for multiple two hour episodes of something. The Bring one two on. hour episode of something is plenty. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> um, Okay, so then my next question is how many podcasts do we exchange? Um how many is on your list? I know of two that I want to give you for sure. Uh-huh. Um I could do a third one, but I think I might keep it to those two because one of them often posts um one of them often posts uh multiple podcasts a week. They they do two each week. Oh, okay, okay. So it would be two shows but three episodes? Yes, yeah. Okay, I, because you've, one time I did get you to listen to an episode of All Fantasy Everything. Mm -hmm. So that one, we don't have to repeat. So I was thinking of my other mainstays, and like, if you did three episodes, I could give you three episodes also. Sure. That's fine, yeah. Okay, we want to start with three, and then maybe we can repeat this. Like maybe once a year we trade podcasts and we'll eventually work through all of our beloved subscriptions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. That's so what, like what are my assignments? So uh, the first one that I want you to check out, you've already listened to a bit of this one. Waypoint Radio uh, okay. is is my one of my favorite podcasts. Uh, so you and I both had this uh connection that we, we we didn't really know about uh of of listening to a podcast with patrick klepek on it yes <laughs> we found that out when uh yellow jacket season one 
came out and we watched it on the reactor core. <laughs> um, but yeah, he he's one of the hosts on Waypoint Radio. They post uh, twice a week. Um, OK, so I think they're. I saw that an episode came out earlier today. So do you want me to do that one and then whatever the next new one is? Yeah, that is totally fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cause today is Thursday and then I, it, it'd be, it's, I think like Monday or Tuesday is when the next one is out. It, it's most likely Monday, I think. Okay. Um, yeah. Waypoint radio. All right. And then the other one that I would like, uh, for you to check out is, uh, the talking comics podcast. Um, this is so last year you and I got to interview Stephanie Cook. She yes. is a former host of that show. Uh, this is a weekly comic book podcast like the one that I would like to make. Um, this is my is this, my weekly comic book podcast. So this is kind of a pink logo. Yes, like pink and white. Okay, and I got yellow, the right one. And it says talking okay. comics. Yeah, that, that one. Uh, so here's a caveat I will say with that one. Uh, they ha they've started a second podcast that they have not put on a separate feed yet, which I have to be be honest, I think is kind of annoying. Um, but the Talking Comics podcast itself, uh, they post on Wednesdays. So okay. if you want, you can listen to the one that was out uh, two days ago and have that one be the one. Um, or if you want to wait, uh, and listen to the one for next Wednesday. That is fine too. Um, okay. But this thirsty on tune one. Yeah, that's not that uh, that's okay. That's a secondary show. Got it. Got yeah. it. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for my assignments, Kyle. My assignments mind. to you. Yes. Uh, a new episode came out in this show today. This releases on Friday, so you can go ahead okay. and listen to today's episode of Podcast The Ride. Podcast The Ride, the show, the podcast, yeah. Yep. Podcast The Ride. Uh, and, and this episode just happens to be a very good intro point. It is the three co-hosts talking about their like local childhood theme parks. It's like their cool. origin story. Good stuff. So I hope this is illuminating. Uh, releasing a new episode on Sunday will be Blank Check, mm -hmm. uh, a film podcast hosted by David Sims and review show alum Griffin Newman. Yep. I know of this one. I mention it a lot. Uh, they, are, they talk about directors' filmographies, and I think this next episode should be an early Stanley Kubrick movie. Maybe The Killing. I, don't, I cool. forget. Uh, and then releasing on Monday... Comedy Bang Bang, comedy which is bang bang. Uh, it's improv comedy nonsense. Perfect. It will be the the host Scott Ackerman as himself, and then it could be uh, other comedians or celebrities as themselves, or as improv characters, or it could be one hundred percent improv characters with deep mythology that you have to try and figure out. <laughs> this is why I wanted to do this. I wanted to make you try and understand a comedy bang bang. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good stuff. Uh, well, yeah. That is what we will do for next week. We will report okay. back with what happened on all of these podcasts. I think this will be a fun exp experiment. Um, and interesting to see how Melissa spends her week. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> Will I think less of Melissa by this next <laughs> week? Who knows? <laughs> I've given oh, you a, a real you gamut of this? topics. Wow. Disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, well, Melissa, where can the people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And as I mentioned earlier, listen to Saturday Morning Obscurities. I think our yeah. uh, our Digimon episode with Ignacio just came out recently. Go check it that did. out. It did. Uh, yeah, we we retweeted that one on the oh, what? Thank you. Uh, I, I saw it. I was like, ha yes, it's finally out. Here it is. Uh, so, yeah, good stuff. Uh, you guys can find me at Yo Kyle Springer uh, on Twitter. 
And if you guys would like to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do uh, here at The Whatnots, of course, we are at The Whatnots on Twitter. This music is lagging behind just a little <laughs> bit. I, I hit the button, but it, it you know, it was late start. Uh, but yeah, go like, share, subscribe, do all of that stuff. That would help us out a ton. This has been number 201 of the Captain's Log. We will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.